Let's flip back to, to the Falcons. You mentioned they've got Marcus Mariota. Yeah. We went into the draft thinking they have to do something. We knew they were going to do something. Yeah. They may as well have put a sign out in front of their facility saying we're drafting a quarterback. <laughs> right. How surprised were you that it was Ritter instead of Willis for them in round three? I, I, I thought I was surprised actually it wasn't Corral, I'm going to say. I, I didn't know if Willis would be their cup of tea there. I wasn't sure. You know, I kind of from the beginning kept going Atlanta and Corral made a lot of sense to me. Corral like led college football and play action action pass we know Arthur Smith loves to do that I thought that might be the 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 match there I was surprised with Ritter Ritter to me is less talented than all those other guys as a thrower it's not even close but as we discussed leading up to it in a weird in a weird year like this he has the intangibles you like and he you can guarantee he's kind of like hey yeah there's not the rawness and the immaturity of Malik Willis and then they get the same thing with Matt Corral Ritter, there's none of that talk. Ritter dominated the meetings, the meeting process. Ritter was probably my favorite interview at the Combine. He's one of those guys you could just tell. You could throw him in a room, and he's going to adapt and be a good guy, and people are going to love him. So he had all those qualities, let alone you know he's a winner, and he works hard, and he's a good athlete, and he has some size, but the, the throwing needs work. So that's where it was surprised to me, but I think when you talk about all the other things that have come out, especially after the weekend a little bit, you realize why they went that direction. There was an example in that pack of one of the primary challenges of ignoring statistics generated by college players, especially yeah. quarterbacks. Yeah, what was it? Because that touchdown pass he right. threw against Notre Dame, that looked like me playing There's a lot of like back. that. What was Mike? that guy doing? Like, I, I, and I remember when Geno Smith was at West Virginia and he had 25 touchdown passes and no interceptions, I had a scout – contact me and say and i think this is the throw here like this is me playing safety yeah that's like, kyle hamilton that's kyle. too by the way oh god sorry kyle <laughs> well sorry, it was kyle. such I a kyle just got twisted around a well little it there. was such a bad throw it, it was such and so was that one's yeah. not a great throw either it's such a bad throw hamilton was running because you're going oh wait i'm beat but the ball was seven yards stop so by the time he starts to look up it's too late but Mike, those throws right there, I mean, that just shows you. There, there's, there, it's a little concerning, but he does have all the other stuff, so you hope you can work on that and, and get that better. And that's what Atlanta's going to, you know, take their little gamble on with him. That, that's a genius strategy. Deliberately throw a bad ball so an elite safety gets twisted up by what a bad ball <laughs> Next it level. is. But what I was saying about Geno Smith, yeah. he had 25 touchdown passes, no interceptions in 2012, and the scout says, you know, if Maryland actually had a safety that could play, there were three interceptions <laughs> right. to be had in that game. Yeah. That's So there, was a, there were interceptions to be had by Notre Dame. They just didn't expect Desmond Ritter to be throwing those ducks up in the air. And I'll do, I'll do respect. I mean, but look, the film is what it is. We're not making – personal assessments of anyone's character here but the, those couple of those throws yeah they're not there's a lot of that up for grabs for yeah it's it is below average nfl throwing that is that is the big thing but everything else checks the box and 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 i think some people have checked it in a big way so they're hoping they can fix that but yes mike i mean i even broke down during the my my you know my my podcast where i get into these things when he just throws the ball to the right Anybody in the right, it's it's guys wide open, it's 50-50. It doesn't matter if anybody's covered or not. So there's some real technical flaws as far as his throwing is concerned, but he does have all the other stuff. And the other guys might have had more talent throwing, Willis and Corral, but damn, there was a lot of question marks about all of them. And I just didn't realize Corral maybe had so many, you know, skeletons in the closet that way. And, of course, Malik Willis, I think, maybe had a few more and some more concerned teams out there than we, we initially realized. How much of it do you think is that Arthur Smith, the coach of the Falcons, and also Terry Fontenot, the GM, want to have a guy who matches mm. Marcus Mariota more yeah. closely? So we don't get into the two-playbook thing. We got one playbook that we run, and Mariota and Ritter can both run it and with similar strengths, similar weaknesses, so we can work on both of them and have one offense I that's going to so. get the most out of Kyle Pitts and Drake London. Drake London, right. the betting favorite to be Offensive Rookie of the Year. Well, you got to have somebody throwing him the football if he's going to be Offensive Rookie of the Year. So I, I just I can't help but wonder they were attracted to the idea of having a more seamless transition from yeah. Mariota to the next guy, and they thought that Ritter would be a better fit for that than anybody else. I, I don't disagree with you there. I think there's probably a thought there. Uh, you know, it's it's – and Ritter's not a far-off kind of thing from a Mariota 
or even a Ryan Tannehill, right? Play action pass. Oh, wait, nobody's open. They can run, right? We see that in Tennessee with both of those guys there before. Bootlegs off the Arthur Smith game. Oh, they can run. Guess what else Tennessee used to do with Arthur Smith? Shotgun, read option, quarterback, keep it around the edge. Like Ritter's going to be good at all that stuff. So, yeah, I think philosophically, Mike, you're right. He, he fits a lot of how they want to play and what they want to do. He's smart. He's played in some big-time college football games. And, yeah, they're going to try to work, work with him on some of these throwing mechanics, flaws, whatever else there. But I, I do think you're, you're spot on. That that's probably the thought there, and that they don't have to change much in the offense with those two guys' skill sets. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.